So nice to see everyone here. Welcome, welcome to this pre wonderful presentation. We're so, I'm so delighted to, to be here. And we're introducing the Forgiveness Liturgy, Turning Pain into Joy, a liturgical approach to healing the depths of the mind and soul and heart and body beyond the limits of modern psychology with Corina Gheorghiu. I'm so excited because we're both Romanian, so. <laughs> It can't get any better. And um, Corina, she is a premarital counselor. Come right in. And um, she, in the Greek Orthodox Church, but by background, she's a family and marriage therapist in California. And she's a private practice for about 10 years. And her parish is St. Catherine in Rodondo Beach. Am I saying that right? And with further ado, I'm introducing Corina for a delightful workshop. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Iwana. Um, it's difficult to introduce myself. She just asked me, introduce yourself, and I'm not there right now. But I just will introduce myself in this way. Um, five years ago, I met, um, I met my mother, <laughs> my spiritual mother, uh, which was uh, Mother Silvana Vlad from Romania, from a monastery. She passed away last year. And almost to the day, five years ago, Looking on YouTube I, uh, for something else, but looking for forgiveness. A few months before that, I was told, now it's time for you to forgive. And I thought, no way. I don't know how to forgive. I don't know if I can forgive. Um, it's not easy. Everyone says forgive, forgive, forgive. But everything that I've been looking for and finding was not good enough for me, meaningful enough for my heart. So... Here I am on YouTube, and I found Mother Silvana talking. I don't remember what she talked about, but I remember feeling like I found my soulmate, um, literally. And I know, sure, I'm, <laughs> she's a saint, I think, almost. I mean, nobody wants to call her like this. But she had such a huge impact on people, and especially younger people. And such an impact. She had such an impact on me. Um, and the next day, I emailed her. She started, she uh, emailed me back, and I started a forgiveness program with her emailing. And initially, I thought, in no way I'm going to do this through emails and write about my life and everything. But I felt so compelled to do that. And that was five years ago. Right after I finished, after Christmas, my priest told me, oh, that is amazing. People suffer a lot from lack of forgiveness. And because people suffer, they cannot forgive. They just cannot forgive. They confess, but they still cannot forgive. Let's do some workshops. And I started a little bit, <laughs> not very brave, not brave enough. Hopefully now, with the book that came, my husband translated about her. So I feel more, um, I feel like I have a back. I have a backup. And this goes to what I am, I'm doing mind and body, not only talk therapy, but also somatic. And having a back, it is important. We all need a back, especially us, some of us who were raised in not the best families for whatever reason, doesn't even matter. But when we have wounds, especially early wounds and uh, later traumas, then for such people it's very difficult to forgive and we don't know how to forgive. This is the truth. Uh, I think the fathers there can um, back me up on this. That is the most difficult, as my father, uh, spiritual father, told me. And um, we will find uh, a way, I mean, I'm, I want to present you a way in which we can um, maybe start to understand a little better uh, what forgiveness is, what is not, and how we can work with it. And this is um, all that I was taught by Mother Silvana, who was um, a brilliant woman, an initial atheist in Romania, philosophy teacher. And then she, 
actually so much sought God that finally during a, a funeral service, uh, she discovered God. I do not remember exactly uh, how, but she felt this is the God I've been looking for, the God of love. So I think this is essential because we want to step into a different realm. So I invite you to step with me. So I have my back covered and I'm here to support you in this journey. But I am just a tool, right? God is doing the healing. And I think this <laughs> workshop is wonderful after the amazing uh, presentations uh, of Dr. Zaklaridis. Mm -hmm. So this is stepping into a different realm. We're still here. We have our feet on the floor. You know, in this case, the gravity force is holding us here. Uh, I, during a workshop, I had the idea that God fit, fit uh, God um, arranged everything for us, not only the unity and mind and body, but also our feet on the floor through the gravity. If we go on the moon, we space out, I think, right? You know that feeling when you're not grounded, where your feet are not on the floor, right? Can you feel your feet on the floor right now? Great. Or on Mars, on Mars would be so heavy, talking about inertia that we couldn't even move. So we have the perfect force of gravity to keep us up and in the bipad position with a good mind in our head. But the problem is that many of us, and I want to talk first about me and some of the people I work with, because I work with many people, and also ma many young people who go to church, they confess, they commune, everything, they do everything, and still it's very, they're very confused. Because it's this pull of gravity in a way, not God's way. It's a pull of a gravity of the material way, where the spirit goes away. And this, it's almost like a split between the person in the church who goes Sunday to church and the person during the week. And this is a very big problem. How can we um, unite everything? How can we integrate so that we can live our life in continuous prayer with the Lord, whatever we do? So this is a question that I think I learned a lot from Mother Siluana. And now I am expanding it a little bit with my knowledge, with my psychological knowledge and um, the other knowledge I may have through God's grace. So this is just a summary. You can imagine this is, this is the thickest um, uh, slide. Don't worry. <laughs> um, I just wanted you to see everything put together. So the title, as you saw, it's a very complex title. And it's a little um, brave of me to put it there. So I will make it as concise as possible, and then if you have any questions, you can ask me, email me, or we have time uh, to talk. We will talk about forgiveness as a holistic frame of reference, total healing, relational healing, restoration of love, therapy, true therapy of the Holy Spirit, Self-offering, continuous prayer through our sacrifice, we're of love, love in, in the sense of attention. This is the first love. I'm attentive at me, at myself. I'm attentive at you all here the best I can. And this is maybe the, a huge sacrifice of love, a huge offering for a person who goes through a lot of issues that may be the best they can offer, and that could be their perfection, understanding perfection in God's way. So we will look at God's way, union with God, because that's what I learned, that this is our goal as Christians, to unite ourselves with God, to become God-like through his grace, not little gods through our own grace and knowledge. Then... Um, 
you know, the Holy Fathers and Metropolitan um, Hieroteos Vlahos and Father Romanides talk about a sin, a illness. And uh, Mother Siluana expanded that a lot. And I think this is, well, this is my opinion. <laughs> You are entitled to your opinion. A wonderful way to synchronize everything and integrate psychology with uh, our faith. Because uh, forgiveness, it is, in my search for a long time, I found psychological, psychological forgiveness, I found is good for your health. Yes, forgiveness is good for your health. Even people with cancer, they... Uh, eat right, they pray right, they do everything, but they miss one thing and they don't heal. And you know what it is? The emotional part. The me so everything is faster there inside. And think about this for the what I'm going to talk later. Okay? Um, and these things, what do we do? And yesterday it was a question, what do we do with our feelings? And I think this approach has um a lot to uh, give about this so forgiveness we look at it and we need to understand it also in a human psychological way because we are living in a body we, we cannot deny our body and thankfully we have a religion our spirituality is mind and body we don't separate it as other people do and then we get into other problems because we don't know what to do with the body and we say oh you know be pure or you're impure and then we really miss the target because the sin is uh missing the target oh i don't want to say this but this is i mean i will say it uh, the target is the uh, bullseye, is our Lord, Jesus. That's, that's what it is. We all know, and I think we all agree with this. So another thing is, oh, how can we approach the healing, especially forgiveness, as a healing of sin, sin being illness of mind, body, soul, and also a sickness and illness that it is in the mind and body, us, we are here and all of us have, is anyone here that forgave everything and everyone? Because I, you know, I have people saying, I put in my mind and I said, I forgave everyone. I go to confession, I forgave everyone. But then they go home and they say, you know, I still don't want to see you in my life, my own daughter. It could be a reasonable thing, separation, when it's intense, uh, it's a severe trauma and you have to protect others. But it could be something more than that. So we are addressing that, and I see a nodding, so I think you understand what I'm going to. Because it, is, it can be a fine line, and not that fine line. People may say it's a fine line, but sometimes it's clear. We just don't know. So uncovering the wounds, it's a, it's a process. You'll see I'll go very uh, fast through this process, through the phases. And it's a whole forgiveness. It's a whole mind-body-spirit process from a, the point of view, psychological point of view. We go to a therapist, and the therapist says, Forgiveness is not my thing. Oh, you don't even have to forgive. Many of us therapists, and I was there too, I thought, how could I forgive this and that? No, they deserve it. They need to be punished. I was there, and I was in church. I was in church. I was confessing. Well, I was <laughs> lucky enough that my father knew, I think it was the intention of my heart, that I do not want to be so mean and nasty and ugly. But I just, I was there. So that was a huge imperfection, and I'm so grateful to my mentors that they kind of um, helped me along the way, plus many years of psychotherapy. <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah, so this is my story, and I'm not really ashamed to say this, because this is many of our, my patients, my clients' story. So it is a somatic, it's a neurophysiological healing. And I do not, I will not dwell much on this because I, I will dwell more on the 
the frame of reference, the, the holistic. We're entering God's temple, and that's what we do, and we bring whatever we know we don't know because our prayers, see how beautiful our prayers, how that's why the psychology of the Holy Fathers is the best, and they even knew. And forgiveness, what I know and don't know, even the not remembered. And neuroscience, um, epigenetics, many, many new uh, sciences um, show that it is true. It is true. It's like a domino effect. And we also have the confession that many people don't have. Even if you're not Orthodox, you can go through this uh, program. And um, uh, Mother Siluana told me that this would not be a problem. So if you have people who are on the fence or something, this is they worship their way, and we worship our way. So going back to the neurophysiological healing, this is, you know, I've been very... Um, thinking a lot about the um, remembering evil. Many people confess, I remember, I cannot let go of evil. Oh, how is it? Uh, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So it's, I remember, I remember, I cannot let go. So this is a lack of forgiveness in the body. But we have to know that um, the body is the one who holds everything, holds the trauma, holds the, um, everything, all our experiences. The mind kind of forgets. I have this image of cut and paste. This is our mind. <laughs> it goes like, oh, I put this here, I put this here, so I'm fine. I go to confession, and I find a way to excuse myself, but not really. Can I say, Father, I'm such a sinner. But you know... He did this, she did that, right? right? <laughs> we, we know this. So, um, so going back to psycho uh, psychology, you know, trauma work, this is essential. I would also want you to look at, um, I made a mistake not very long ago with a client who was sexually abused, molested by her stepfather when she was very young. And she in church, in a church, so it was t horrible, you know, being abused, and then let's pray for forgiveness. So what a horrible thing. And after a few years, I think, I told her, do you think that now it's time to just let go, to, um, to bless everyone, maybe even to forgive? I made a big mistake. And I kind of knew that I, it's something not, she was not ready. Well, you know, we made it up. I said, oh, don't even think about that. She's not there because she haven't uncovered things. She needs to function. She's young. She needs to function. She's married. She may want children. And um, we need to support her first. And then forgiveness comes maybe many years later. I, I wanted to say, who cares? Yes, we care. Forgive me. We do care. The, the thing is, can we, you fathers, we therapists and other nurses and chaplains and everyone, could we just hang in there and apply this for ourselves first, for all the parts of us? You know, this is a question. So you understand what I'm saying about the psychological. We, why am I not dwelling on this? It's be, as a frame of reference, as a frame. We can, and I'll tell you how I, how I apply it on myself. This is out of question. Um, heal thyself. Know thyself. It's better than, uh, it's more important, more, it's higher than making miracles. Mm -hmm. Who said that? I forgot. I saw it recently. Yeah. And here... You can use whatever uh, means you know, and it's also coaching. I do also co coaching. I call myself a Christian life coach <laughs> for the people who come to me because it is important to have a guideline. You know, sometimes people don't even want psychotherapy. And here, you can work with the, uh, the uh, 
most automatic defenses, fight, flight, freeze of the automatic nervous system, there where everything is stored up, especially with early trauma. So when someone comes to you, you may see, you may ask them, oh, I had a perfect childhood. And then I'm asking, and why are you here? Their response is, oh, I want to forgive my sister. Okay, let's start here, there, one person. And then from one person, a whole family system unfolds, a whole dynamic. Because it's not just your sister. It's a lot how the parents, how the extended family, how the teachers reacted, responded. Were you the favorite child? Were you uh, the good uh, child, the rebellious? So you know all those things. So this is really for everyone to apply whatever methods they are already doing. Someone may come to you already in therapy. How could you apply this? You apply however you think it's fit. But you know that it is possible to bring forgiveness in any situation, just to put it out there, but sure, not as I did with that client, just with more discernment. Yeah, so this is it. We should not kid ourselves. Forgiveness is a gift from God. And we cannot say, oh, I... uh, I forgave everyone, or, oh, I, um, um, I work so much on this. Yes, we need to work. It's a human process. So this is where the work of Mother Silvana comes in very, very useful, a process. So she leads us through this process, and I'm going to uh, slowly, uh, slowly, <laughs> not very slowly, it looks like, uh, lead you through this. Uh, Maybe even if I kind of stir up your curiosity and maybe if you just want to learn a little bit more about this, do you really know what forgiveness is or not? I didn't know. I read a lot, but I still didn't know because I think it is this human process, a journey, but then it's our journey. But if this journey is done without God, it's just a psychological journey. Just that. Is it good enough? For many people, sure it is. You know, people heal themselves from cancer, for a lot of things, uh, uh, releasing all the feelings related to unforgiveness. But is that for life eternal? This is the, not for everyone, but I think for most of us and for us, Orthodox Christians, this could be, how am I living my life? Because the society puts out there, have fun, relax. So this is all important, but this is all important to put into a category, into the process and perspective of healing that wounds, that somatic, the body wounds, the nervous system who is very hyper-aroused or hypo-aroused or both and dissociated. This is very difficult. You need a special therapist for trauma and working with parts and everything. But this can still be put in the whole perspective. At least you as a therapist, you as the healer of the, not healer, we're not healers, forgive me. (laughs) See how this society takes over. (laughs) Yeah, as the tools of the Lord who who heals others. Um, This is a perspective. And I began to do this. Before I start a session, and if the client wants, oh, he's beautiful. I mean, I don't have much experience with this. I didn't have enough clients to see this, but I think this is wonderful. So I'm there, and we say, this is our container. This is the, um, Winnicott calls it, the holding environment, the holding environment. So here we are, Christ is with us, and everything that we do in this session, we start, we end, and everything that comes out of the session, we will put it in God's hands. And then we're kind of covered, (laughs) right? Covered by the Spirit, truly, and ourselves. And then I'm like, oh, Lord, I don't know what I did. So you do the rest. You complete and 
You know, you know their journey. I don't know. I really want to push them, go fast, heal fast, as I push myself. <laughs> but, you know, that's a process. So I think this is kind of clear, right? I mean, the way, um, yeah. So we, this is our goal. I will not spend much time, but I want you to feel this icon. Here it's in French, it's l'enfant. It is the child, and I love this. I personally love it. I think this is the epitome of healing. Oh. Oh. Now, where are we? Do you recognize us in yourselves, in your parents, grandparents, society? Yeah? So from there to here. But we have to start exactly where we are, here. This is many times what is underneath everything. Yeah, this is a scariest slide. I was not politically correct. You come and work with me after this if you need to. <laughs> the skeletons, <laughs> this is what doesn't let us live. We live our ancestors' life and epigenetics and everything, it shows us, it shows. And we're listening to Mother Silvana a lot. She's in Romanian. And I, in 2014, uh, 12, I think, even earlier, she was talking about the epigenetics and transmission of trauma. Mark Wallin is talking about in his book, um, It Didn't Start With You. So we have everything. You know, we do have everything. But we have to find this. Not everyone has something like this in their closet. But it is a family skeleton for all of us because I skipped something to say. Okay, I'll relieve you now. <sighs> My son does this. I know what it means. Oh, mom. <laughs> but yeah. So can you imagine that our calling actually is to become saints? And I wouldn't dare say this, uh, but Mother Siluana has even a short YouTube, and she says, this is our calling. We have all the tools, and I'm thinking, oh, boy, she's a little out there. <laughs> but she matches me very well, so <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go there. Maybe I'll never. I mean, it's very possible. But a little bit, to be a little bit better, maybe through the process of forgiveness, I can bring and work on my, and put these skeletons, the, these skeletons in the closet to sleep, to pray for them. It's almost like I have this image of the dry bones, and through our prayers, even if they are just bless you and oh, bless you throughout your, oh, you know, you don't want to say this, but you still do. It is the Holy Spirit coming. It's a very good beginning. So what if through our little prayers to day one, this moment one, this is, uh, you know, day by day, maybe our grandkids, grand grandkids will come and sing Christos Anesti, Christ is risen, to our bones. Who knows? This is a very uh, daring uh, statement, but God knows. It's not ours to know. So this, it's called a healing through forgiveness. And you may ask me, but you were talking about forgiveness liturgy. We, the, so this is a process of the last one, the last step, the last session, it's about forgiveness liturgy. We need to prepare. We cannot just uh, jump into that. Maybe some of you can, but usually we prepare. It is as we prepare for uh, the uh, Eucharist, as we pre prepare for everything, especially for the uh, divine liturgy. That's how we need to prepare for everything and turn everything. This is, this is key, what I learned from her. No matter what, we can turn everything into prayer in this very moment. This is, 
I think, essential for us who live in a world that is not only a world of thoughts, it's a world of sensations, it's a world of sin, and you just look at something and right away, who knows what's triggered? And sometimes it's triggered old ancestral things, demonic, uh, you know, everything, where they come from. But then they go in the body. What do we do with them? We turn them into prayer. This is it. This is all it is. Simple but difficult. We also have some crossroads, and I'll just go here. Crossroads or obstacles. Um, I put it into phases because I don't want to, uh, I'm not a theologian, but there are phases. The, I don't know how to pronounce this, the non um, yes, epiclesis and theo theophany, epiphany. So the same, we bring, we have a, pro we have a process. So forgiveness is not only uh, just a mind thing. We start here in the mind with, let's say, intention, decision to forgive. Then we apply this good mind, not the autonomic, who says, I don't know what to do, I don't know what to do. Not this one, but the mind who says, whoops, I'm in trouble, I don't know what to do. Let me put my feet on the floor. <sighs> Sigh, take a breath, whatever you learn to do, that is very impor important ground yourself, and also you do this with the uh, prayers of the, uh, of the holy um, divine liturgy. Let us stand well. Let us be attentive. Let us bow down our head. Let us lift up our heart. I'm saying all this because this is not only the prep We can prepare like this all the time, but we can also make an intentional uh, preparation for our whole life to be attentive, to be clear, to uh, not to get um, derailed like I got now because I have so many ideas after these talks already. Uh, yeah, forgive me. Um, so we, uh, uh, So the preparation is... The Holy Fathers say that the mind and the, uh, and the heart got separated when Adam and Eve uh, fell from heaven. So this is a journey, I would say. The forgiveness, it's a forgiveness journey to go back to unite the mind to the heart. And to go into the heart and dwell there as in the church, on the altar, put everything there on the altar. So a preparation. We ask, we go to confession, we, uh, first of all, we figure out what we, what we did. Then preparation, let's say, the um, prayers for before Holy Communion. So this could be a, a human process, uh, uh, my part into this process. How do we do? So we learn what is forgiveness, what is not. Where did it start? One session, it's people seem to be very excited. I mean, very, um, it's almost like, a, like an essential understanding that this started, we all have this aggression in us, and we all have uh, survival mechanisms, um, and this, the aggression started with Cain, right? So then the fourth session, we look at how are we like Cain? How are we like Abel? We want to be there, right? <laughs> Both, because it's also something, not everything is miserable because in us, because it's uh, God's image there. So he is there. We don't know. But we find out. Um, and the fourth session, um, I, I won't talk much about it, but this is here in this fourth session is how do we repeat the story of Adam, uh, of um, Cain and Abel? How do we repeat the story, uh, our own life story? We look at our patterns. We don't want to go to our grand grandparents or something because if someone tells me, oh, I'm so anxious, I cannot sleep, and I say, what did your grandfather do? 
you know, they would sure be, this is crazy, this is a poor therapist. So, you know, and sure, they would be right. So we have to be very, very, uh, to discern what we do. But this fourth session is great because it's a way in which we understand there are ways you can use whatever methods you, you want. Uh, Mother Silvana used uh, schema therapy, and I think it's a, it's, a li it's a very good way of, oh, this is it. This is my schema. Everything is in my, uh, my body spirit. I mean, it's uh, composed of all the thoughts, feelings, and everything we experience and in different situations. This is a wonderful way. But here, if you're a therapist, you can go deeper into this. I wouldn't say you do this with trauma clients. You, I mean, I think it's out of question. Or uh, with uh, psychiatric problems uh, with, uh, and um, severe depression, severe anxiety. People need to be regulated, self, uh, teach self-regulation, and then they then work for sometimes with tries for years to just balance the person, you know, and that in itself could be good enough and they can do God's work and function and continue their life. So careful about this. The uh, session five to me looks like a crossroad is, okay, now I know everything and now I decide. I have free choice. But not really. God gave me free choice, but maybe my parents haven't, or grandparents, or who knows who, teachers and other things. They said, do what I say. Become a doctor because I'm a doctor. So this is, forgive me if I touch anything here. It's a tough subject. But, and I'm not saying to blame. We're not here to blame parents. You're, we are here, and anyone else. We're here to see. And I will say this. People say, come to me and they say, oh, my parents did their best. And I think that most parents do their best. Not 19, uh, not 100%, but most parents. But still is the question, was their best enough for you? Most tell me, I didn't have, my mother was not there. She was cooking all the time. My father was always drunk. Uh, different things. I was left at my grandmother. I feel forgotten. So all those things, really deep wounds that are there, um, may not allow us to have free will. We think we have, because we have fun and we do whatever. But that's not free will. This is a free will that I do whatever I feel like it. It's the impulse, not the being on your both feet in front of God and do, doing your life, living your life. So this is decision to forgive. So for some people maybe, hmm, I'm on the fence. Let them be on the fence if they are comfortable, if they don't get, you know, <laughs> uh, pain, more pain about it. But I think if people understand that this is a process of it's a gift of God, and we're just in here to do our best and wait for God to come with his grace and give us the gift of forgiveness, then we can continue. And many people continue. Um, once Mother Silvana told me, I said, oh, I don't know if I forgave. I work so much. And she said, you do not think about that. You don't. It's God's way to, to act on you, to work on you. Um, and you may not know what God is working. And you know, it took me three years to understand that and to see clear results in my life, how I felt, how I felt. And it was not this uh, mushy, fuzzy feeling, oh, I love everyone, I forgive. Like you see, I go to Whole Foods and it's like, hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It's, it's painful for me, you know? Not that kind. That kind of saying, I still, my body still remembers, but I can say, bless you. I feel like someone cuts me off and I'm like, oh, bless you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I got um, rid of road rage. I realized one day that I was so mad, people cutting me off. It's worse now, I think you know this. So then one day I thought, oh, God is cutting my will. 
And that did it for me. So, you know. Forgive me, I'm going on a tangent. I'm so excited to be here, and there's so much to say. What can you do a way, eight week, a ears, ears kind of method in an hour, you know? But I hope that for some of you, I stirred your curiosity, your, yeah, hopefully. Uh, then the forgiveness process has clear steps. So I decided I go ahead. I, even if I don't think I can forgive, I say, Okay, God willing, God help me. Lord, I don't believe that I can forgive. But you help me. You are with me. And that is, don't you think that this is a sacrifice of love? Don't you think so? To go there, you're still unhappy. You, who knows what. But this is still a way after you work on trauma, you do this program, to still, things come. For many of my clients, myself included, a lot of things came, re, re, came back from my past about trauma. I felt kind of re-traumatized with different things. But I had a method. I had a method to say, Lord, come into this. Now I have you, and when I was little, I didn't know you, I didn't have you. That's why I had to uh, keep my defenses and very well cut and paste and, you know, cut and paste and everything. But now I will allow myself to be with you and I will, now I will live this pain with you, relieve this pain. Sure, in here, many times if it's a lot of pain, you will need help. You will need help to support you. And this is something that I'm looking to be for myself to be. And I really hope that others, other therapists could be there and understand this process of forgiveness and not put it like, oh, it's in my mind or, oh, I forgive or in my heart in a very mature way. So after that, we feel oh, like in heaven. I forgive everyone. I know what to do. This is a program of prayer assessment we work on assessing uh, what we forgave what we didn't uh, what was um, fulfilled desire a lot of things so this is not just knowing you know this is learning a lot this is the preparation so it's everything it's not just uh, clear steps but after a while we think we forgave everything and something happens and boy, how everything comes back. And I went to Mother Silana and I said, oh, what am I doing? I'm doing nothing. I'll never forgive. I'm... And that was it. She says, if you're here, that means you did this everything well. You were in touch with yourself and aware and true to yourself because... Always things come up, and we never know what comes up. When I worked with her, I had a lot of memories about my ancestors. I felt a lot of things. I went into very deep into this forgiveness generational. Now she passed away. I don't. So I feel like I had the support, and that's why I think the support of a priest, it's essential. The prayers, we need these prayers to be able to stay um, yeah, so the last, you know what is the last obstacle? It is the most difficult. It is forgiving God. This is the only way in which we can uh, work on the fear, work on this distrust, because many times we don't dare to. We blame God. Why did you let me go through this? Why do you allow five-year-old to die of cancer? Why this, why that? Why me? Why me? But we learn that this is part of the process. This is part of a process. And then we learn how to allow this to happen, allow this, we go ahead. And where do we go? To the Forgiveness liturgy. This is the last thing. So we learn a lot. We assist ourselves, and we learn how to pray more. But pretty much the prayer is, 
Lord, come into my anger. Bless everyone. Doesn't matter if I believe I don't. Doesn't matter. So that's why I call it. This is a love encounter. This is not just, okay, today I did step one. I did step two. Oh, I'm fine. I'm fine. In eight weeks, I forgave a a life of trauma. No, this is a big, big delusion, you know, big delusion. It's a lack of self-awareness. We want to be so, so good because God put in us this longing, this desire to be with him and not to have this uh, remnants between him and us. So, you see, this is a living God, and this is a way in which we can enliven our faith. You, I am in front of you, Lord. So, you all know, I, I, I don't have much time, but the divine liturgy is the medicine of immortality. We don't, uh, we not only enter, so we enter the temple, we enter our church, but we need to also enter the temple of our body. If not, we're just that people who go to socialize and to people watch. You know that, right? I do, <laughs> especially when I'm with my daughter. <laughs> yeah. Um, so turning everything, turning everything. This is the offering. This is a bread. This is us. This is us offering a sacrifice of love or of lack of love this is the altar we enter the altar as i said this is the we don't enter the priest enters but we are royal priesthood we are there and we are together worshiping there in the altar and we are in the inner altar of the heart and we look at this as i said before the divine liturgy as an inner offering we offer everything. What does it say? Let us commend ourselves, our, uh, uh, one another, and our whole life. So our whole life is not just thinking. Our whole life, the life, is the life of the body. The body is this temple, and there are all sorts of coming, getting out. Uh, you hear something, your heart, oh! You know, uh, I'm a very hard person. I was, uh, maybe it's also training and stuff. But I think our heart can say a lot. There are studies that show how the heart intuits something before it's shown on a, on a screen, you know? So the heart has more afferent uh, going up fibers, nerve fibers to the, to the head than the other way down. Can you imagine when I say something about the heart? Oh, I don't want to go there. I don't want to be emotional because people don't understand. They think, oh, it's emotionality. is like, oh, women or something. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes, because, you know, especially tough men, you know, you guys are socialized in a way. We're in a different way. Things are more complicated nowadays, but pretty much this is a conditioning for many, many years. So... Um, we, our life is what we feel in this moment. What do you feel in this moment? You feel like I'm tired, it's hot, I'm getting sweaty, I'm not nervous, but it's too hot. <laughs> that is, Lord, I'm so uncomfortable. Psychological discomfort, physical discomfort, spiritual discomfort. I'm not where I want to be. I so much want to be a little angel, but I'm lower. Because he is the one who, as he changes the, the offering, that we can change in our little inner liturgy. So the body is the temple, the heart is the altar, and the bread is the offering. The offering. We offer this bread made up with a, with the flower of our whatever we bring, material, our suffering, with the tears, with the salt of our tears, with everything. So it is sure symbolic offering. Um, Without this, right, 
or not, uh, the liturgy cannot take place. So we need to offer something. Yeah, this is not, I didn't know how to put it there, but I thought this is not what we offer. This is for our comfort, this is delightful. It's not sealed. It's not sealed with our pain. So this is it. This is where, this is the, from the mind to the heart, let us commend ourselves and one another and our whole life to God, to Christ our God. This is all it is. And as the priest does the liturgy, we can do our own liturgy of forgiveness. This is not, don't, uh, don't confuse them. The liturgy, it's our, uh, it's life-giving. It gives us everything we need in order to forgive, to do the forgiveness liturgy, yeah? So, um, yeah, so I, I say we need to give God not only our good deeds. This is a big trap. We need to give God the good, the bad, and the ugly, especially that ugliness that it's so difficult to go to confession with. Go to therapy, that deeper part. And that's exactly what is the shadow but the gold in it. The gold being, I offer this, you come with your grace in it, and then I'm going to wait for this to be transformed. For the bread and wine in the body and blood of Christ. So again, we give everything. Um, So this is it. It's a feast of... What did I write? Yeah, the feast of feast. It's the we, uh, the offer, and the offered. So the uh, who is the offerer? God. Yours from yours. So we go together in this, and we bring the mind in the heart. As I said before, as the holy fathers tell us, this is the journey. This is the love journey, the reconciliation journey, and where our bridegroom is waiting. So again, we go in the altar. I don't have much time to go through a specific, uh, but I will just tell you how we do this. So again, we go in the altar of our hearts, of ourselves. And we have, let's say, a a few steps. It's just for the grounding, grounding in this uh, experience. We stand correctly in front of God. We place ourselves in front of God. We just don't go there and we say what we did, what did we don't want, what did we didn't want. We just sit in front of God and say what we have to say and then wait. We all, I love all the, it is almost for me, it's like somatic therapy. Let us stand well. I don't want to go there. And let us lift up our hearts. That is the most amazing thing because when we lift our hearts from a, a physiological, from a somatic point of view, we lift ourselves. We lengthen. And that sense of being dignified, majestic body, and then bow down your head. So pretty much the Lord tells us exactly what to do, how to be, only for us to, to listen and then to practice. So before that, we may prepare, we enter into the prayer of the church. As uh, Father Zaklaridis, uh, deacon, uh, doctor, he said, we... Uh, we enter into the prayers of our father's grandfathers. So we are covered again. So we can read an Akatis, the Holy Spirit, the Akatis for the Holy Spirit. I highly encourage you to read it. It's a beautiful, especially after this presentation, it can show you a lot. And then what do we do? We offer ourselves a living sacrifice. And then literally, this is too much for a workshop, but I just put it into a few, like what would we do? It's too much because it's too intense. I think this presentation may be very intense for some of you. I don't know. You let me know after that. If you need anything, clarification, or I'll do the best I can. Uh, we just sit in front of God, we breathe, the breath, it's important because the breath, if we constrict it, it's the constriction of the defenses. 
the constraint is the old man, I think. The old man who says, oh, don't come here because it's not safe. So little by little. So we learn how to breathe. This can be very separate preparation for everything. You see what I'm saying? So you see how this can be applied in so many ways. And then we pray for everyone who hurt us. We call them by their names and uh, we bless everyone. See, even if we don't, um, don't care, we're still angry, we bless them. And I have to tell you, someone came to me saying, okay, so she said, okay, I'm gonna do this, so I'll try. I said, yes, an experiment, see if you can bless, you're super angry at your sister, fine, bless her. She came back and she told me, she got amazing results. I couldn't believe it because I knew how angry she was. She said, I feel at peace. I don't think I forgave her, but I'm not don't go at her throat, you know? So <laughs> you can try. You can try and do whatever, yeah. So the most important thing is the acceptance, this acceptance. And we ask the Holy Spirit. We say, we can't even use words. I let go of this. I uh, Not let go, because... If I say you, you let go, you say you let go, you know? So, no, not like this. <laughs> we trigger the defenses. But we in our own little space of prayer, you can even do this in just a very simple way, not with forgiveness, with the inner liturgy. I talked a lot more, and I do more about the inner liturgy. This is the highest of the prayer and liturgy of forgiveness, this is a, a, hopefully we can reach that place of total uh, allowing God to come into all our wounds and every cell of our body. So that's what we do, pretty much. And we wait for God to turn everything into, he promised that we'll be full of joy. And there are moments of joy. And you know what I think? I'll finish here. The greatest joy is that we have a Lord and we have beautiful people with even the secular methods of psychology still it's God's God God allows God works through these amazing people only to use them well so we have everything we need so at least if we kind of step into the day or the moment of uh, deep um, despair or you know the moments keep your mind in hell which is the most difficult and don't despair uh, but if we know that even there in hell, you know, he is with us, especially there, especially there, we may not believe, but he's there. He went in the tomb, stayed there three days. He didn't raise right away. Why would we raise right away? Why would demand him to be our slave? You know, that's another thing. But this is us. That's okay. We are human beings, he knows. The beautiful thing is that we have the Lord, we have the Holy Spirit, only to call him. Call, Lord, come here. Holy Spirit, cleanse me. Come into my rage. Come into my anger. Come into my despondency. Like that paralytic. That paralytic. He asked him on purpose, do you want to be healed? So we can clarify. Do you really want to be healed or not? So then you have your will. Go for it. I will still call you. Thank you. <laughs> Want to take a few questions? Oh, yes. If I have time, sure. All right. I'll Thank you so much, <laughs> Corina, for your presentation. So really quickly, if there's a question or two, and then we go to lunch, which starts at 1145. And if you come, you will have to speak in this. So. Yes, any burning question? Because the Holy Spirit will burn it. Yes. Okay. For your clients who have suffered from extreme trauma and traumatic events, what um, somatic, somatic um, 
I'm I'm losing the word, but what do you what do techniques? you suggest? Yeah, techniques for them. What do you suggest for them? <gasps> Interventions, techniques. Oh, there are maybe Dr. Iwana can answer much more. Um, I um, I work with. Uh, I think EMDR is very good. IFS is very good. I do not do those things. I work in other ways, a little more out of the box. Uh, I am trained in other uh, somatic t- techniques that therapists are not. It's felt and cries and um, all sorts of things that are actually that what brought me more to my feet because I'm always flying and more rooted in uh, God. So I think a trauma therapist, I do trauma and I do it in my own way, but it's essential and not only for trauma, you know, this or that, whatever. Even the, the breathing, the, the body scanning, so you are present here to know, oh, I have a body, um, are very important. So that's all I can, I can tell you. I do integrative body psychotherapy, but most of them, what they have in common, the, the somatic ones, is to bring us in the present moment mm-hmm. so that we can use our frontal cortex and not be into the, in the, you know, the automatic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So this, I think we all need in this, uh, we are a little traumatized. That's why I don't watch the news. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Any last question? And then we can also obviously yes. stay at the Father? end. You might want to come here. Is that okay? Okay. Um, you referenced the book. One second. Um, mm-hmm. oh. You referenced the book. Are you yeah, recording? That Is that why? Oh. Yeah. Um, it didn't start, well, no, a different book. It didn't, it didn't start, start with you. with you, Mark Wallen. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a great book. It's not orthodox, but it's a wonderful book. I recommend it to everyone. It is about a, a lot of good facts, scientific facts, and they show, he uh, gives examples of the Holocaust, of um, people maybe in slavery, I don't even remember exactly, but many, many, uh, and he explains epigenetics, uh, and uh, it's a great book, it's a great book, because we have it everything, we have the uh, the memorials, we have the prayer and everything. So he's not talking about that, but I think uh, he clarifies a lot and scientifically, he's very well known, uh, so you can trust that. I even train with him and I think he's the real deal, Mm -hmm. though not orthodox. Mm -hmm. And if I could add, yeah, it talks about epigenetics, how things are transmitted over generation. Now, as we learned from Dr. Deacon Ted, it's not like the genetics, the DNA is changed, but we have uh, sequences of DNA that can open or close and allow it to be uh, expressed or not. So it talks about that intersection with mental health and another somatic therapy, somatic experience, oh, so many, uh, which yeah, is very yeah. good. And IFS stands for internal family system. So there are oh, wonderful so, so many psychological yeah. methodologies which can work in such beautiful way in conjunction with our faith. So yeah, yeah. And I think the to answer you even more. The forgiveness, it's an epigenetic change. I did some presentations, I forget what I say, but because it's the, I mean, it's there, but it's uh, the focus, you know, the focus can be different. The scientific focus was something else. But the forgiveness, I think, I do believe that it can, it is an epigenetic change. And we owe this to ourselves and to the future generations, even if we don't have children. I have children, but, and having children, I think it's a good uh, motivation, at least for me, you know. Yeah. Yes, so. thank you so much. And if I could link that with Bishop John's uh, talk from yesterday, oh. that I think there's a way through forgiveness, and when we go through blessing our previous generations, also future generations, yes. Bishop John was talking yes. about yeah. that. There's We're thank really in the for, kingdom yeah. of heaven, and there is a process, and I've, I'm a witness to that. I've experienced the same kind yeah. of methodologies and yeah. healing. Yeah, yeah. So. It's a beautiful to witness uh, each and every moment and forgive ourselves that's the last thing to forgive ourselves yeah thank you very much thank you so much.